Hey, this is Gordon for Inspiration Tests, and in this video, I'm gonna give you 10 tips um, for 3ds Max for beginners. And if you are not even a beginner, uh, stick around, and probably you're gonna pick up something that is gonna help you in uh, in your projects. So uh, the first thing we're gonna talk about is world scale. So, um, for example, this phone that you can see here, if uh, someone buys it or if I give it to somebody and he tries to load it in his computer in his 3ds max viewport he better get something that is gonna actually integrate with the scene he has properly because let's just say if this phone should be for example 25 or 30 centimeters uh, maximum in length for example here this box is um, almost 30 by 30 centimeters in width and um, in length and width and this is actually pretty normal so if the other person is using world scale then uh, when he actually puts this in his project then it's gonna be okay and um, it's gonna integrate properly or if the roles are reversed if you want to apply, actually import a model in your scene is gonna work properly as well tip number two is only try to model in quads what does that mean it means that um, um, use um, try to use only um, quads what which means um, polygons with four sides for example as, as you can see here I sometimes use triangles for um, supporting edges if this is something that I think is gonna actually um, be something that we have to do otherwise it's gonna be uh, uh, quads all over the place because this is the proper way to work and this is what people and other uh, others expect from you and this is what makes things work in the long term because it looks good and it, and it is much better and um, a lot of things that um, we want to talk about in depth about this in the future all right now tip number three is isolate objects to see better what do we mean what do we mean by that it, it, we mean that sometimes we cannot see what going what's going on under the surface or somewhere in this for example this model here so what we need to do is for example to select this one here as we did before and you can hit this one this um, um, this object here isolate selection toggle or if um, if you want to use the if you want to use the shortcut just hit alt Q from the keyboard and this allows you to see uh, the hidden areas properly if uh, for example some other pieces are actually blocking the view and you cannot see so this is something I use a lot um, tip number four is about aligning the pivots uh, what do we mean by the pivot the pivot is actually is this axis that you can that you can see here and if this um, if this axis here is if this space axis here is not aligned properly then it's gonna be um, difficult to work with let's just say for whatever reason um, the axis is actually out of the um, it's actually very far from the center of the object for example when I try to rotate it's not gonna rotate properly it's going to rotate over um, or around the axis and no matter where it is it's not gonna it's not gonna rotate uh, around itself so to fix this problem we're gonna go to actually as you can see here this um, hierarchy and we're gonna hit effect pivot only and then we're gonna center to object bring it back to the center because this is extremely important and when we are um, uh, when we are um, done with it it should work properly sometimes this happens because uh, because sometimes you detach objects from another object and it actually in inherits the and it actually uh, keeps the pivot on the original object so when we tr when you try to work on it it's gonna be problematic so you're gonna you're gonna have to bring it back to the center using this technique here 
Tip number five is actually to uh, save your, uh, your, your work as you make progress. Um, this is important because you want to actually uh, have the ability to go back and edit uh, and uh, extract some of the files on some of the pieces that we that you worked on previously and to separate your work and to be able to actually go back just in case or just to do something else and of course just to not lose your file and to reduce the damage if for example your computer crashes or something like that all right tip number six is to lock objects to avoid accidents um, for example if I want to work only on this piece here uh, let's just say I am um, uh, let's just say I am trying here to uh, work on this one here and um, I don't want to move it I don't want to move the other objects um, especially if we are working on something complex uh, so what we need to do is actually to lock this uh, this piece, this uh, actually this um, this piece here so uh, for example when I try to um, let's just say um, touch another object I just can't it's locked it's um I cannot as you can see here I'm trying to do something else it is not allowing me it's completely locked to this piece here so uh, now tip number seven which is actually naming your pieces properly so um, for example there are a few and uh, different pieces here and what what we need to do is actually to change the change the naming convention of every piece here. Uh, in my scene here, every piece actually is not named um, according to what we should name them. But uh, we can do this. I actually usually I usually do this when I start preparing my model to be baked. So because in Substance Painter, when I do the baking the high poly pieces and the low poly pieces need to match in naming and this is very important so um, uh, and this is also important if you want to find some of the pieces or some of the objects uh, and uh, you when you're gonna start when you're gonna start searching for them inside for example a complex scene it's gonna be easier to find them just search for the name and you're gonna find them Tip number eight is actually if you have, for example, large complex scene, for example, a station, train station, or a police station, or just um, a stadium or whatever, and um, there are millions of pieces in uh, inside of it, and when you're trying to move around it, it's gonna be super difficult. So what we need to you need to do is actually to display uh, all the objects as boxes, as you can see here. Or if you have a slow computer um, from an old gener generation computer, uh, it's gonna be much easier. I've done that actually when I tried to. I created a castle. I remember back in I don't know, maybe 2010 or 2011. It was one of my first massive projects. It was uh, actually so difficult that um, my computer were was actually uh, frozen for five to ten minutes when it is saving the uh, the data the uh, the project files and uh, and when I try to navigate it starts lagging like uh, crazy and when I discovered this trick it was much easier tip number nine is actually to use the viewport clipping for example if I want to zoom in super close sometimes this doesn't work why because um, uh, either the object that you are trying to look at is super small or um, there are other problems so what you need to do is to go to viewport clipping it, it, it is actually activated that that's why it was working properly so if it is not if it is not activated that uh, yellow bar on the right uh, you, you're gonna start to see that there there are some problems here and I cannot see clearly when I zoom too close to um, to my object so the viewport clipping will solve this and the viewport clipping is actually um, uh, we are changing how the um, how the camera of the viewport the perspective viewport is functioning 
it is really helpful when you are working on some small pieces and uh, if the camera actually cuts the um, cuts through the object and um, it does not let you uh, and, and it will not allow you to see what's going on properly and finally um, tip number 10 actually there are a lot of t there are a lot of tips so I just chose 10 probably we're gonna do other tips in the future so this is the last one tip number seven that is actually hit uh, actually t tip number 10 hit seven from the keyboard to see how many polygons and how many vertices you have in the viewport actually now we have 55,000 polygons and 20, 28,000 um, vertices and I actually have another actually way or tool to do this just go to utilities and um, you're gonna find the poly counter here if it is not here you're gonna actually go to more and you're gonna find it over here uh, how the poly counter works it is almost the same as this um, those statistics those statistics here but um, what's different is actually uh, the poly counter is gonna allow us to see how many um, how many vertices and how many polygons uh, each and every piece has and of course the total is in the bottom you can set the budget for example if I have for example let's just say the budget for every piece is 10,000 it's gonna tell me how okay I'm doing actually here in the bar is going up and down if the the budget is 5,000 this is gonna be much uh, is, is gonna indicate and it's gonna tell me that there are um, some problems here and I need to lower the number of polygons in my scene so I hope that those tips were useful and I will see you in the next tutorial that is uh, coming soon so take care and I will see you probably check some of our previous previous videos and I will see you in the next one